hot because my cat just about jumped into the back of that monitor when it was turned on. So let me get rid of the cat here. We have an interesting little demonstration to show you today. The previous video, we talked about time-based correctors and how they correct video. And I've gone over this with people in the past where people have said the time-based corrector will replace a macrovision eliminator. Yes and no, okay? I'm going to show you the differences. I'm going to play a tape that has macrovision on it. And we'll do this demonstration both from a DVD and off of a VHS tape. And we'll be able to actually see what the macrovision signal looks like on the screen. I'm just going to get rid of this cat here before she sticks her nose into the high voltage and we have a Kentucky Fried Cat here. So just give me a minute to set up. And I'm going to demonstrate exactly how this thing works. And you'll see the differences. And this is not going to be a long video. This is just a quick demonstration. I'm not going to use my oscilloscope or anything because I've already done that with the previous uh, macrovision video where I actually showed how it works and why it doesn't work and so forth. But this one here lets you physically see on a screen what the macrovision signal actually looks like and how it disrupts your recording ability of that signal. So that I don't get in trouble with the Jurassic Park people, I'm not going to show the movie, but I'm going to show just the corner of the screen here. Here's our macrovision signals. Okay, now this is what causes your VCR or your DVD recorder not to work. You see these pulses changing color here? That's what causes when you try to make an analog copy of a macrovision encoded signal and the picture goes bright and then it goes all washed out and dark and then it'll go back bright again and then it'll go back dark and that will actually follow this interference signal. That interference signal is actually encoded in the first, I think it's the first 15 lines of video following your uh, vertical sync. So this is your vertical sync here. This, this black line here is your vertical sync. And the first series of, this is color stripe here. That's that one there that you see causing the color burst to screw up there. That's what's designed to try and mess with your color on your recording. And you've got a couple of keying pulses here. This is what's detected by more modern uh, VCRs and DVD recorders. That and this keying signal here that tells them to shut off and not to allow you to make the recording. Now, I'm just we're watching the uncorrected video. This is coming right off the tape. And I'm going to switch the time-based corrector on and show you what the time-based corrector does to this signal and it might surprise you now the time base correctors is on it's eliminated this keying signal over here and it's eliminated most of the interference signal but it hasn't removed it all Many VCRs will allow you to record it. It's also removed the color stripe interference signal on the color burst here. Many VCRs will actually allow you to record that. Some of them won't. Most of them will. Most DVD recorders will not permit you to record this signal. The reason being is that there's still a little bit of the signal remaining. It's removed most of it, but there is still some of the signal there. If I go back to the un- corrected you can see the rest of the signal is here and you've got these black i'm just going to crank up the brightness here if i can so we can even see this better whoops crank everything up hopefully that'll show up better on camera if can... but you see these are interference signal so this white pulse is much whiter than the whitest the brightest white that's capable of recording and these black pulses here are driven right down to the sync level. This is what messes with the automatic gain control on your recording VCR. These two signals over here, these are the ones that mess with the chips that more modern VCRs had that would that would ignore the AGC messing signals. They just wouldn't even go into record at all. They would detect that signal and they say, eh, I'm not recording. Sorry, 
and you get a message that says cannot record DVD recorders as well would go with that and again we're removing most of it the time based corrector which is I'm just using the Videonics MX1 to remove this signal as you can see it's removing most of it there are still some keyed signals here and some devices will pick up on that and they won't allow you to record but for the most part the interference signal that makes it go bright dark bright dark is gone now let's put the macrovision eliminator on you remember the macro scrubber from my previous video this little box let's plug that in and see what difference we get now we're still going through the time based corrector let's switch it out so now we're not going through the time based corrector but we are going through the macro scrubber the macro scrubber has completely completely removed all this interference there's still this little keying pulse but there's no there's not the two pulses together most machines will ignore that but it has completely removed the interference signal and it's 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 muted the interference to color stripe so this is what a macro scrubber does and that's what it does differently than just going through a time-based corrector and of course if you run it through the macro scrubber and the time-based corrector you end up with an absolutely pristine video signal that has no interference signals whatsoever let's hook up a DVD player and see what the differences are on macrovision over a DVD compared to uh, videotape okay what we're looking at here is we're looking at a DVD this is the here the movie is just starting and here we see what they do on DVD that is completely different than analog video here's our color stripe interference signals here you can see them they come on go off and this is what causes when you try to make a copy of a DVD this is what causes the little thin lines across the screen that's the color stripe interference signal again we've got our index signal here and we've got our white and black pulses which is actually making my tube actually go into overdrive and flare a bit there because I've got the tube cranked up but here again here's our our interference signal you can really clearly see it now we don't have any time based errors on DVD because DVD is digital these signals are actually being generated by the DVD player they're not being they're not on the video whatsoever because it's a it's a completely digital signal on DVD the video signal is being generated internally by the video processor of the DVD player and it is what is generating these signals there's a flag that set that says turn macro vision on or don't turn it on and another flag that would say turn on color stripe or don't turn it on so if we if we just look at without uh, putting the the, uh, the edge cross or the pulse cross on you'll see these signals go from top to bottom I don't want to leave that on for more than a few seconds because I don't want to get hit for copyright to, uh, infringement so at least this way I'm not showing the whole picture right so as far as I'm making a match on this it's probably pretty slim if we look at just the vertical here's just our vertical interference signals if we go to under scan we have four equally spaced uh, interference signals here this information here this is the actual closed captions this data here this is what makes the closed caption show up on your TV so let's look at this through the time base corrector pretty much gone this is just the time base corrector notice that our interference signal our color stripe signal is gone Notice that our macrovision signals are gone. I could take this DVD, run it through this time based corrector, and make a perfect quality copy analog DVD without having to rip it or anything. I could just plug it into my DVD recorder and make a really good quality copy just using the time based corrector. Let's uh, plug it into the macrovision scrubber and see how it compares to the time based corrector for removing 
Macrovision from a DVD. Macro Scrubber does it as well, but Macro Scrubber is not getting rid of the color stripe pulses. So even though you could make a copy of this and you wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't necessarily uh, have a problem uh, making a copy of it, the color may still have some disruptions depending on what you're recording it on. Recording it onto tape, you may still have some color disruptions. Uh, going through both the Macro Scrubber and the time-based corrector, of course, is going to remove everything. But in this case, you don't even need to use the Macro Scrubber. If you want to copy videos and you want them to look good, you only really need to get yourself one piece of equipment. Just get your, get your hands on one of those things and it'll do it. It'll do it. It'll cost you a few bucks to get one of these things because they are getting kind of scarce now, but uh, that will eliminate all forms of interference on your NTSC videos. Hope you enjoyed this, just a quick kind of a little tutorial on macrovision and the different types of signals. I think showing it on the scope as I did it before is it gets a lot, it gets technical for some people because they don't really understand what they're seeing. But if you put it on a pulse cross monitor, you can see exactly what's going on. Another thing you'll notice that the uh, my little macro scrubber there is um, it eliminates the closed caption data. So if you run through a macro scrubber, you will lose closed captions. We'll catch you in the next video.